Welcome back to the channel. I've spent my entire week behind the wheel of this 2024 Acura MDX Type S. And in Canada, we call this trim the Type S Ultra. Now there has been a slight refresh to the MDX in 2025, a little bit of a tech refresh, a little bit of a front fascia refresh as well. But I thought we'd still take a look around the MDX of 2024 and see if it's worth buying now or should you wait for 2025. Let's get right into it. So first up, as usual, we're starting with the front end for the MDX Type S. You can see that it is a really, really aggressive front end, and this isn't even as low as the car can go. So I have it in normal mode, which just basically means that it's, you know, it's got a little bit of lift to it, but if you put it in sport plus or sport mode, it actually lowers quite a bit, you know, for the good aerodynamics. So let's get a little bit closer here. You can see we have this type S badge. You can see we have like a similar grill to what you see on the TLX, where you kind of have like this pattern going through it here a massive Acura badge, which also I'm sure houses some sensors and has a front facing camera. We do have parking sensors, all that stuff. I like kind of the, the front end of this thing. It looks super aggressive. Last year, I showed you the Platinum Elite MDX, which honestly looked so much more boring compared to the Type S, which is really good. When you have a sport mode model of any type of SUV or any vehicle in general, you want it to look aggressive and sporty and you want there to be a noticeable change. And the Type S, is definitely done that here. Also, these daytime running LEDs look really, really, really good. At nighttime, in the daytime, they shine, and I'm a fan of them. Next up, we're gonna take a look under the hood for the MDX Type S. We've got a three liter direct injection turbo V6 engine, giving us 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque from a 10-speed automatic transmission, and we also have the super handling all-wheel drive. So this is quite a fast SUV. So next up, we move over to the side profile for the MDX Type S. You can see when I stand right here, it's got a very nice profile to it. Not much has changed in terms of that for 2025 either, so that's fine. And I, let's just get really close because I love these rims. We have the Brembo Acura Brembo brakes that are red painted right here. Love them, matches the red paint of the entire vehicle, which looks really, really good. I love the look of these rims too. They're nice and big. And these are Continental actually self-sealing tires. So what that means is if you do get a puncture, it will seal itself kind of right away and you don't have to get a repair right away. Like, you know, you don't have to, you know, drive yourself to the garage. You can, it buys you a little bit of time. So that's really nice. Type S badge right there on the side. We've got massive side mirrors that are piano black with a nice turn signal LED, as well as a camera underneath because we do have 360 degree camera for this thing. And then we have keyless entry, of course, one touch lock and unlock buttons. The back windows are nice and black, nice and tinted. You can't really see into the back of the car, so very good. But yeah, I love this metallic paint color. I love a Type S of any Acura in a nice red. They do really good reds, the Acura brand, so happy to see that here as well. And yeah, it just looks very aggressive. And if, it, if I use my different lift modes, you'll see I'll try to include a bit of B-roll here. You'll see that when it's in the max lifted mode, this thing could really get some good ground clearance going for a sport vehicle. All right, so last but not least here, we have the rear for the MDX Type S. You can see we have like these really nice and aggressive looking again, tail lights right here. We've got the rear wiper, very nice. I wish it was tucked up underneath the spoiler here because I worry that in the winter, these things will break. MDX badge, the SH all wheel drive badge. Of course, we've got a rear facing camera. And my favorite part about the rear, look at the size of these quad exhausts. The only problem, is that they're not loud and they don't produce that much of a sound. I think Acura could really have something crazy on their hands if they made these guys right here really, really pop or at least give us some type of sound from the V6 because it doesn't really sound that good. We also get a little bit of a diffuser that we can take a look at while we're down here. So let's open the trunk. It's automatic tailgate, of course. I believe I have my third row up right now. Yes, I do. So the mat is kind of everywhere, but here we go. So it comes with these nice Type S mats here that I've got. And then let's actually fold these seats down and show you what kind of space we're working with. So I can do it with one hand, but it's a bit difficult because I got to push, pull down and kind of push at the same time here. So do one of those. There we go. Same thing with the other seat push down, do that. And then once you do that, you have a ton of room. You just gotta get these seat belts out of the way again. This is much easier to do when you are not one-handed. You're not trying to hold a camera. So there you go. That's how much room we're working with. When you fold that third row down, you can also see our cup holders for the second row. I like the Type S thing right here on the badge. Let's take a look at the third row in close though. You can see we've got two cup holders there 
and we've also got some USB storage on the other side as well. All right, so that's just about going to do it for the exterior tour of the Acura MDX Type S. Let's hop inside, we're gonna talk about the rear, then we're gonna take a look at the front, and then of course, POV drive coming right up. Let's get to that. All right, as usual, first up, we're gonna take a look at the back seats. So, got a nice Type S badge right here on the door sill. It doesn't illuminate or anything, but that's fine. We got our ELS Studio speaker right back here with this like nice wood panel. Also, we got privacy screens, which is very good too. I like this red and black stitching nothing there to complain about if i click this button right here on the bottom of the seat you'll see that it will power slide forward and then we have our third row which i uh, do not really fit in even with these kind of fully up it's difficult so usually i'm just going to fold these down but for the purpose of the video i have them kind of folded up so you can see what we're working with back here you know you do have some usb stuff you got cup holders as well and uh, you've also got your own lights back here as well. So it's really not a bad place to spend time if you can fit. I, however, uh, do not fit very well. So now let's actually hop in the second row here where I actually fit way easier and I'm going to recline, actually move the seat back. There's a little bar on the bottom here that I can do that with, boom. So I've got just enough room here that, uh, you know, I'm not uncomfortable at all. I've got enough room between you know, the driver's seat and my legs. And then we've got a pocket storage here, pocket storage there. I really like the stitching here as well. You can see it's kind of like this red and black stitching again that goes through. There is some ambient lighting back here. I believe in like the speakers kind of light up. I have to do some shots at night to really confirm that. This is gonna be hard to do with one hand, but I can like pull this here and then let this fall. And then you can have a cup holder and a little bit more storage here if you don't need that middle seat right there. So that's very nice. Same thing, you gotta kind of pull it to go back up. Then I've also got my own climate control back here and we have three levels of heated seats for the two side passengers there as well. But I can control everything. I've got two USB ports down there as well as 12 volt and a normal kind of power outlet right here which you can kind of rotate and stick something in there, no problem. So you're definitely getting enough air back here. That's very nice. This is also very nice and leather padded that I like as well. Nice big windows, nice big sunroof as well. You get a big view, great view of the front. So let's actually hop up there. All right, next up is the front seat. Let's open the door here. Much bigger door over here. We have three memory seat settings right here as well as again, we've got a nice kind of wood trim going along, red stitching, a bigger ELS studio speaker, the trunk button is going to be right here. We still have the Type S kind of sill right here, which is very nice. All my seat adjustments are all powered. Same thing for the passenger. So the seats is the same thing as you saw out the back. It's this very nice kind of like weaving kind of stitch right through, it really adds a lot of detail to it. So I like it. So let's actually hop in here. Easy to get in, no problem. It does have the feature where when you get out and get in, it'll kind of fold up the steering wheel and the seat and remember you by your key fob. So you can see I have key fob number two this week. So every time I get in, it's set to key fob number two, which I set my settings to, obviously. So let's start with the left-hand side. We've got a bunch of stuff for the heads-up display. Then we have our sensors here, parking sensors, stuff like that, and then our brightness, and as well as the button for the electric heated windshield, as well as a parking brake, which is electronic right there. We've got a fully digital gauge cluster. If you've seen my videos on the TLX, then this is pretty much the same thing. Other than the car in the middle is the SUV but I can flip through some stuff here. There's also like a couple of different screens here as well where I can go gauge layout and you can kind of have like an advanced one they call it so you can have a little bit maybe more of a sporty look. I do however like just the crafted one and you can see just in about enough you can see what drive mode you're in your trip info stuff like that's very basic but I like it. I like how the little car there lights up with my lights when I press the brake, that's very cool. So let's take a look at the steering wheel. I love like these two things here that are very grippy. I also love the red stitching that's in between here. Very nice to look at as well. Type S badge right down there. I've got my lane keep assist, lane centering, stuff like that, adaptive cruise controls all right here on my right hand side. Left hand side, we have our heated steering button as well as some of our media controls and our different app controls that we can use in the heads up display. Then we move over to our digital infotainment display. Plenty big, no complaints there. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, built in navigation. Uh, pretty much everything that you would want to use with the vehicle is all here. You can set up your sound settings, different things like that, display settings, it's all right in there. The only unfortunate thing about this screen is the fact that you have to use it with these, this touchpad. Some people like it, some people hate it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Personally, I'm not a fan. And I believe for 2025, they approached the screen a little bit closer to the driver and they actually made it a genuine touchscreen and got rid of the touchpad. So it's clear that enough people 
probably don't like it if Acura is willing to change it. So that's a welcome change for 2025. But in 2024, look, the trackpad, if you really don't, it's a bit of a learning curve if you use it for the first time. But once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to navigate. It doesn't glitch. It doesn't do anything like that. It's just, I just prefer touchscreens. That's it. It's only preference. So moving on, we have tri-zone automatic climate control, two zones for the front, one zone for the rear. I can control things very easily from here. All my HVAC controls are all buttons. I don't have to use the trackpad or the screen for anything, so that's very nice. I've got three levels of heated seats, three levels of ventilation, and you can also put it on auto for the driver and the passenger. Also, we get a massage feature, which is very cool. If I actually hold this button, you'll see something that comes up. I have all these different settings and modes for the different you know, uh, massage techniques that you would like the car to use. It's absolutely crazy and extensive. And the passenger also has it. It's rare that the passenger gets it. Usually I have cars that only the driver gets it. The passenger, you can have some fun too there. I've got my gear selector here, which is the button one. Don't hate it, didn't mind on the TLX, same thing. Also, we have our drive modes that's gonna change like your picture for Sport Plus, normal, comfort. That's also gonna change your ride height because we do have an air suspension. You can see the little thing in the bottom left corner there. It's telling me where my air suspension is in Sport mode. It's obviously on the lowest and in comfort. And you also have what's called a lift mode for the, uh, obviously for the, the off-road stuff, or if you're driving in a lot of snow, you'll probably get full lift there too as well. So that's really cool. And then of course, if I hold the button, I'll go into individual mode, which you can customize the suspension, the sport, the engine, the steering, the engine, stuff like that. You can put it in sport mode, comfort mode, whatever you want to do. I've got this little guy that's going to pop out. This is for basically just the passenger charger. I've got some quick volume controls, a little bit of storage here, this little pad for your hand. My USB is actually in the storage right here. So there's this level of storage and then there's a kind of like a smaller one there. And then we have our wireless charging pad right here. Perfectly good, no problem. Another huge speaker on the other side. Also, the passenger side is memory seats as well. So that's very nice. Really, the only piece of tech we're missing is a digital rear view mirror, which I don't have. But honestly, I don't really care that much about uh, the digital stuff. And also, I think I've heard a couple complaints about the fact that there is a lot of piano black here, especially when you go over to the passenger side. But honestly, the passenger is really not touching the piano black stuff. And if they are, well, then I don't know why you would need to. Um, and then you also have this nice wood trim above it. So I don't know, maybe it would be nice to see the wood trim kind of continue a little bit more and have it reversed, have the wood here and the piano black up here. I don't know. Personally, it's not in high touch areas, so I can't really complain about it too much because if you can keep it clean, then you're not, you're not gonna really have any problems there. So yeah, there you go. That's gonna do it for the interior tour of the MDX Type S. Let me strap the GoPro on my forehead. Let's take you through some drive modes and let's tell you how it drives. Alrighty, finally driving the 2024 Acura MDX Type S. And yes, it is such a nice thing to drive. You, you kind of got everything you could want, right? Like you got all the, the luxury features, massage seats, ventilated stuff, heated, like all the stuff you know, literally every kind of luxury thing that I could kind of think of in a car, I pretty much have. And then also it's kind of fast. Like it's, it's, you know, for what it is for three row SUV, it, it can move. So like right now I'm in my individual mode, which I have my steering in sport, my engine in sport, and the suspension is also in sport because it, it likes to lower. And I really like driving the car at the lower setting. But when you do comfort and stuff like that, it kind of does and normal mode kind of raises you up to about halfway. Then you have snow mode and lift and lift is like the maximum where you can go all the way up. Looks really cool. Um, so yeah. So right now individual mode is really good. I like that. I like Acura when they include their individual mode stuff. You can kind of really fine tune what you want. So you can have like a sporty engine and like a comfort suspension, but then like I feel you can't control how high the suspension goes. So I can't have it in comfort, but low. So I kind of have to take the sport for that. So let's actually put it into, so that's normal mode, sport modes right here, and then sport, and then I'm gonna press the S and let's go. Woo! A little pull, it does pull quite well, uh, but it, the only thing is that audio that you were hearing, the person behind me definitely did not hear any of that. That's pretty much all pumped in audio, so yeah, it's, it's a good sound and it kind of saves it a little bit. It makes it a little bit less boring, but look, like I'm not on the throttle at all right now and you can't hear it, but if I get on it, then there it is. So that's the thing is like, it's nice to have, but I feel like Acura missed, a, missed something there where, you know, you have these like quad exhausts. They look really good out the back. Fantastic, I love them. And then they make no noise or not enough anyways. I feel like they could have had kind of like a, you know, 
maybe even a variable exhaust where I could turn it off, turn it on if I don't, you know, if, if you don't want the three row to kind of bother the neighbors, but like you could have made it a little bit more personality wise because the TLX has a bit of personality to it. And of course the Integra has, has all the personality for the exhaust, but still I feel like they, I, I wish it was a little bit louder. And I mean, let me know in the comments if you've tuned your MDX type S to, uh, you know, to really hear the V6 that's in here. So I can speak a little bit about fuel economy. So I've done about 200 kilometers by this point and I'm doing 17.8 liters per 100 kilometers. It's kind of on the high side for me. I was expecting it to be a little bit low. It is a big three row and I'm pretty much always driving in sport mode. Um, but still, I feel like, you know, I haven't been driving, I do a lot of city driving. So I guess it's picking, it's picking all this weight up all the time. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I feel like I've had heavy SUVs as well that have gotten lower than that number. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you do a lot of highway driving, I notice on the highway, that number tends to drop quite a bit. So this car seems to like to drive at highway speeds, not so much the city driving that I do. I do have some paddle shifters, but uh, I'll tell you now, they're not, uh, they're, they're fun to use. Like, don't get me wrong. Like it, it does give me the personality of, of like a sporty car, but like it upshifts for you at a certain point. Like the red line is at about 6,000 RPMs and it will pretty much upshift just before that by itself, even if you have it in like manual mode. So uh, yeah, that's something that's like, well, just if you're going to put it, let me do it. I guess it's just something that Acura has to make sure that the transmission engine doesn't get damaged. Also the transmission sometimes, like when I'm in sport mode, like, you know, and I've got some distance, but when I'm like in a bit of traffic where it's stop go, sometimes the gearing doesn't always know what I want to do. It's like kind of bad at predicting me. So like sometimes you get like a little bit of like, it's, it's like weird. It's, it only happens in sport mode though. The comfort mode kind of dials it down cause it, it shifts really quickly anyway. So it's always in a higher gear, but in the in the sport plus especially with the transmission in s it's always trying to select the lowest possible gear to give you the max, max amount of torque so like it's kind of like jerky at times i'll see if i could try to do it here like if i get on the throttle and then get off and then get on yeah see like it it's kind of like it gives me like a big boost and then shifts up too early and then tries to shift down again but doesn't like it so it shifts up again Yeah, so, so that's, I mean, I just wish it was a bit faster as well, the transmission, but I mean, it's decent. Like it's nothing, like I don't hate it. Um, 10 speed auto is good. And for most people, that's gonna be fine. Like, I don't think a lot of people are really gonna notice that. They're gonna go, oh, sport plus mode. Let me rip this thing. Oh, that was incredible. Let me do it again and get arrested. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what it is. I think, I don't think that uh, people that are buying the third row type S are really like looking for, perfect synchronous shifting. I don't know if they'll notice it. Like I only notice it because I've driven other vehicles that are like performance SUVs that kind of shift pretty quick. And I, so I notice it when I, when I sit in this one, but people that don't really do that are not going to have a problem. Visibility is also really good. I've got these huge side mirrors, stuff like that. I can see out my window, not a lot of blind spots that I'm worried about either. So that's great as well. And yeah, it's just like, it's just a nice cruiser, right? Like it can cruise, it can rip around town. It's got plenty of room, like plenty of room for my my child and stuff like that. I never use the third row. So the fact that, that I don't gives me so much trunk space. And I am just, I love it because I can be prepared for anything. I can just, you know, we're going out for the day with, with the baby. Let's just take more than we need. And that's it. It can stay in the car if we don't need it. And if we need it, bang, it's in the car and it doesn't take up like any leg room or, or anything like that. So it's been phenomenal there. Yeah, this, this is probably at the top of the short list or near the top of the short list for performance three row SUVs that, that I've really come to enjoy here. It's, it's just solid. Steering feels great. Super handling all wheel drive is exactly the, the word that I'd use for it. You do get a little bit more feedback from the steering wheel because of that. And it just feels like it's able to turn a little bit easier. And I, you know, I just, it just feels better in general. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the MDX type S. But I think I'll go ahead and leave it there for the driving portion. If you like the video or if it's helped you at all in making your buying decision a little bit easier, make sure you subscribe, put the bell notification on. You don't wanna miss any of the new videos. The month of August is gonna be a big one for me if everything stays the way it is. Even like the next couple of weeks, it should be really, really interesting. And I think I got some cars that you guys are really, really gonna enjoy. So you're not gonna wanna miss, you're not gonna wanna miss any of it. With that being said, make sure you leave a like for me. I'll see you in the next week, see you in the next car. Take care.